Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to talk about how I make uh, my panels for egg tempera painting. Egg tempera needs a surface that is uh, slightly absorbent. You can't use an acrylic ground or gesso uh, for egg tempera painting. Uh, the pigment will just wipe right off of the surface because acrylic gesso completely seals the surface, so you have to use a gesso that is semi-absorbent. The materials that you need to make your own panels are uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty simple and it's uh, cost effective. That's why I make my own panels and you know, make some high quality panels. You can buy them uh, but they're, they're costly. Um, so I make my own and what you need are just a few things. Uh, first of all you need uh, you need your surface that you want to use. I use cabinet grade plywood. This is half inch cabinet grade plywood. Anything over this size I would go to a three quarter inch. Um, you could get this at any hardware lumber yard. Um, and I've tried other surfaces too. Uh, masonite, MDF board, poplar wood. Uh, the, the cabinet grade plywood works well because it tends not to warp because of the way the, uh, the plies, the woods, are all layered. Uh, they're, they're crossed between each other in here. Uh, poplar wood, which is what uh, traditional icon panels are made out of, uh, it, that can warp, so you have to make a brace for the back of that panel. And it, that can be very time consuming to do that. Um, MDF board is uh, it's too absorbent, and anything that's you know, large, over 8 by 10 inches, can warp and can crack. You can also use uh, masonite. Masonite's a good all-around painting material. It's good for uh, egg temper too, uh, but you have to be careful. You can't use uh, masonite that you get at Home Depot. You have to use untempered masonite. Uh, and that goes for, uh, I'd recommend that for any type of painting that you're doing if you're going to use masonite. Masonite has uh, certain resins and oils that are put into the material which cause the material to, to, to temper, to, to make it hard. And what can happen with that after a few years is they can outgas. And so the, the gassing process will come through the painting that you've done and leave all sorts of marks on the painting. So you have to get a untempered masonite. There's a few places that make it, uh, I believe there's a place called Georgia Pacific that makes it. Um, however, untempered masonite is uh, it's sort of like MDF board in that it's brittle. It, it's, it, it can fall apart. Uh, so that, that's why I've tended to use uh, the cabinet grade plywood. Uh, also, I want to stress that this is, this is what I do. This is what works for me. Um, there's all different ways and recipes for making panels, so I'm not saying that this is the way you should do it or, the, or necessarily the best way to do it. I've been doing it this way for close to 10 years now, and it works for me, and I've had no problems with it. So, other materials that you need is you're going to need material. Um, I cover the, the plywood with a material. This is a uh, unbleached, unsized uh, muslin, and it's thin. You want something that's, that's thin. You don't want a thick material. And you, you want to cover your, your wood surface so, so if it does crack underneath or if there's any sort of grain on the wood, it won't come through the gesso. This will stop it from coming through the gesso. Um, you can use linen. Uh, again, linen is costly. Uh, that's why I use this material. Now, some people have said that you know uh, canvas is inferior to uh, linen, and that's true. Linen will last a long, long time, and cotton will break down. However, th this is being sealed from both sides, so it's not being put on a stretcher bar like normal canvas would be put over a stretcher bar. The back of it's not gesso. The back of that canvas. So things can attack it. Uh, this, is, this is sealed on both sides. So other materials that you need also is you're going to uh, need a couple, uh, 
couple good brushes, a gesso brush, and a brush that you're going to use for the rabbit skin glue. Um, and then that uh, rubbing alcohol. All I use the rubbing alcohol for is to clean off the surface of the panels before I put the rabbit skin glue on them. And uh, you're going to need some sandpaper or some sanding blocks, and I use sandpaper that goes everywhere, anywhere from 220 grit, starting out from 220, that goes all the way to, uh, this is 800 grit, and this is for the final passage of when we're sanding. And you're also going to need rabbit skin glue. Uh, glue. The, this comes in, uh, this is the granule form, it also comes in a sheet form. Um, you can get this, uh, there's a lot of uh, suppliers online, art suppliers that carry this. And it's just a dry form of, of the glue. So what you have to do first of all is you have to seal the surface that you're going to be working on before the material and the gesso is put on. So what you want to do is you want to prepare your rabbit skin glue. And the way I prepare it, this is my mixture. Um, I use one liter of water to three tablespoons of the rabbit skin granules. And you want to put it in the water and you want to let it sit at least four or five hours. I recommend uh, 12 hours though because uh, the granules will absorb the water and will get nice and soft. So when you go to put it on your hot plate and warm it up, you have to, you have to apply this glue warm. Uh, it, it will melt and it'll be, it'll be nice and soft then. So you want to let it sit. And you also want to have a double boiler. If you can't find one, you can make one easily like I've done here. All you need is, you know, some sort of metal pan for the top and just another pan for the bottom. And the reason for that is you want to put some water in here. So when you put it on your hot plate and you put this inside of there, this will prevent the rabbit skin glue or the gesso, which I use this for also, from burning. So after you have this prepared in there, you let it sit and then we'll come back and we will start to seal the surface.